everybody, back with another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. We are on a journey of top 10 secrets to brain health, and tonight we're doing number two. Number two is a very, very, very important one. Real, and I'm not doing these in any sequence, actually. These are all equally as important. And what I want you to take away with you is it is the cumulative impact of doing all these. So focusing on one is not gonna get you nearly as far as actually trying to bring all 10 together. Number two is very, very powerful. It is to reduce your risk of vascular disease. Our brain only makes up about two to 4% of our overall body weight, but it accounts for 20% of the oxygen used in the whole body and 50% of the glucose goes to the brain. Now the key is that brain cells, neurons, cannot store these fuels, neither oxygen or glucose. They are unable to put it away packet it up for later use. We have about nine to 11 minutes worth of fuel at any given time. And as soon as the brain perceives that one of its fuel sources is going down, is dwindling, the activity of those cells goes into a down regulation and it is not as efficient and not as productive. And that means we're going to get symptoms. Healthy blood vessels are elastic and smooth. They are able to contract and expand according to the demands of our biology. So if we're moving our body more, we have to have more blood flow to move our muscles. We also, if we're doing cognitively demanding work, we need to be able to have increased blood flow so we can focus more, so we can make more complex memories, so we can perceive spatial experiences in a more accurate way. The problem with vascular disease is it is very, very cumulative, and it's something that starts to build probably as early as our 30s and 40s, and that is one of the themes in this series, is what you do today is either putting your future brain health at risk or securing it. So even if you're listening, you're in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, there's never too early of a time to start being concerned about brain health. And the truth is it's never too late. So any effort is going to give you benefit, but the truth is the more you can make these things sustainable habits in your life, the better your brain health is going to be. So what diseases affect blood vessel health? Well, mostly it's hypertension, high blood pressure. Then we have diabetes because the glucose going up and down, the more wide, uh, variations you have, the more damage you're going to get in the blood vessels. And of course, um, bad cholesterol and untreated sleep apnea. We think about these as kind of the top four vascular risk factors that affects blood flow. Now, the thing is, oftentimes these things are associated with heart health, and that is true, but the vessels that feed the heart are actually huge when it is compared to the brain. So you could visualize these with the human eye. What's going on at the level of the brain, once you get past the carotid arteries right here, which are about the diameter of your pointer fingers or your vestibular system in the back, which is about the diameter of your pinky, everything in between is actually very, very small. And in the core of our brain, which is where we do a lot of our rapid processing of information, coordinating through different areas of the cortex and subcortical areas, is, the diameter is only about a piece of hair, human hair, which is teeny, 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 tiny. So if you think of someone who needs a stint or a bypass in the heart, when these blood vessels are even bigger than the human thumb, you can imagine how quick it is to be able to build up so much cholesterol that no blood flow can get through under pressure from hypertension or big swings in glucose. What we actually see are those teeny tiny blood vessels kind of break off and they are one way streets. There's no way to get collateral blood flow in there like there is through things like the carotid artery system. So as you go through the aging process, your cardiovascular health really equals your brain health. That's why we often say, heart health equals brain health. So what I want you to really, really focus on here is monitoring blood pressure, 
diabetes, cholesterol panels, sleep apnea. Those are your four medical issues. And if you are diagnosed with them, you want to hit it hard and be aggressive with lifestyle changes and medication compliance in order to minimize that risk. So many times, by the time we're diagnosed with one of those four things, there actually has been a little bit of vascular damage that's already happened. But the idea is you can stop it in its tracks and sometimes reverse it a little, but not always, because once those teeny tiny blood vessels in the brain are diseased and gone, there's we don't stint the brain. There's no way to get those back. So I want you to focus on minimizing the impact of those four things. And then the two other things that you can do that are extremely powerful to ensure blood vessel health. So remember, that means they're elastic, they're smooth, they have a lot of life in them, is moving your body more and avoiding a processed food diet. As I go through my top 10 secrets for brain health, we're gonna focus on those things a lot more. So tonight, I'm gonna leave you with that. Number two, reduce your risk of vascular disease. Bye. Mm -hmm.